this kingdom of heaven, this celebration that you hear in our own city. Was not holding up against heaven, but this one I needed something that's not inside of me.
It was good when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord to worship. Please open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Reading from verses 1 to 13. Matthew chapter 25. Reading from verses 1 to 13. When you find it, I'm going to ask you to stand with me as I'm, I'll read it here here. Matthew chapter 25. If you find it, you can stand. If you don't find it yet, just say, hold on, Pastor. All right, me hear the hold on, now hold on. All right. Matthew chapter 25. And I'll read it here, here and again, just let some of you know I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it says, when the kingdom of he Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel and with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slept and slumber. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise said, answered, saying, No that there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with them to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Here is a portion of God's holy word we honor by saying, before we sit, I want us to pray. But before I pray, I want each and every one of us to Make a special request. Lord, show me what you want me to know. And when you show me, help me to do something about it. Because some of us, when we hear the word of God, we're saying it's for somebody else. You're not here this morning by mistake. It's by divine appointment. So, for a few minutes, you say your prayer. And specifically say, Lord, show me what you want me to know. And when you show me, give me the strength to do what you want me to do. Let us pray. Our God, our King, our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend. The one who speaks and it happens. The one who sustains everything with just a word. We humble ourselves and we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the opportunity that we are able to be once more in your presence, gathered together. And Lord, as we prepare to dive into your word, O oh God, Lord, I pray, O oh Father, that first and foremost, O oh Father, start with me, that you will empty me of everything that is not of you, O oh Father, that, that, I may be, that I may be filled with you, O oh Father, that, Lord, you will use this mind. Lord, you will speak through these vocal cords. Lord, you will move through this body, O oh Father, that everything that is said and done will be pleasing to you. And Lord, I pray for those who are hearing your word, O oh God. 
I pray that you will take away every distraction that the devil will try to use right now to, to move their attention from you and from your word. And I pray, oh God, that they will hear, not only with their ears, but also with their minds and their hearts. And when your spirit speaks, oh Father, that Lord, each and every one of us will respond accordingly, oh God. Because Lord, we are not here by accident. But you have pleased each and every one of us here. We're not physically able to stand, but we're physically we're here, we're here because you brought us here, oh God, to learn something, to know something, and to do something. So Lord, have your way. Let your spirit continue to permeate this place and start to prick hearts right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Last week, we started the theme, watching, watch for the return of Christ. And Pastor Martin spoke on the theme, uh, 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 on the thing, are you ready, ready? And it was geared more, as, uh, 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 as, as, they said, as they said, towards the same. This week, the Spirit has led me in a different direction. This morning, it is geared more to the unsaved, or the people who think they are saved. And there is a song by um, Robert Lester Marley, or for some, for the younger folks who know their history, Bob Marley. And he sings a song, I don't want to wait in vain for your love. I don't want to wait in vain for your love. I don't want to wait in vain for your love. Right? But this morning, I'm just going to take a few lines from the song, from my theme, which says, Don't wait in vain. Don't wait in vain. This passage that is put forth with, uh, 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 in front of us, Matthew chapter 25, is a passage that is well known. It's a passage that is used over and over, and it speaks to, it, 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 we use it to speak to the unsaved. But I want to challenge each and every one of us this morning about don't wait in vain. The backdrop of this parable is Jesus talking to his disciples. And it's not, he's not talking to the Pharisees or the scribes. He's talking to the men that are following him. He's talking to his disciples. And within this discourse, he gave them three different parables. And the parables of the wise and the foolish virgin is right between two, different, two, two of the parables. It's the middle one. And it says, all of the three parables, parables have something in common that simply says, Jesus is coming back at a time when no man, woman, no, or boy knows, but only him. And he constantly says, be prepared. The first parable, he said, they must keep watch and work. The second one, in with the virgin, he said, watch. The third one, he says, watch and work. There's something about this parable that I want us to understand. There's something about this parable that I want us to leave here with and do something about. And I said it's a well-known, it's a well-known story that has been preached over and over. But let's just look at some of the things that we can learn from the Saint Virgin. As it starts off, and as it starts off, and you know the story. And just to help us not to wait in vain. All the ten virgins had the same information. They had the same information. What was the information? The information is once a man get married and a celebration of a happen. And as Pastor said last week, back in those customs, we think we celebrate when, when our wedding time. But back in those days, when the Jews celebrate our wedding, they celebrate our wedding. And we normally come to this why the wedding to we start two o'clock at night until seven o'clock at night. The Jews' wedding last days. If it's a virgin, it's seven days. If it's a widow, it's three days. 
So there was a, there's a celebration going on. There's a celebration to come. And in the Bible we see, and Jesus speaks about it a lot, that there is coming a time when there will be a celebration going on. Not here on earth, but in heaven, in a place where, guess what? There will be dancing, there will be singing, there will be no more headache, heartache, there will be no more sickness, there will be no more death. There will be nothing for you to worry about. All your work, all you have to think about is just praising God because they in a place that you're taking care of. It's a celebration that Isaiah spoke about. It's a celebration that Ezekiel spoke about. It's a celebration that Daniel spoke about. And then Jesus came. And when Jesus came, he keep on talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And he tells them that, listen, the kingdom of God is different from anything you have ever known. And each time he speaks about the kingdom of God, he tells them that the kingdom of God is like a wedding feast. A wedding feast where you go and you don't pay no money. All you do, you, you just show yourself up and then I feed you. All you do is go show yourself up and you'll be taken care of. All you do is go show up and you sit down and relax and be able to cater to you. And he, 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 he said the kingdom of heaven, heaven is like that. It's a celebration. The information that these virgins had. They got, was that listen, there is a bridegroom coming. And what you need to do, you need to go out and meet him. So guess what? When you meet him, he might carry to a celebration where you just might just enjoy yourself. So they had the same information. Because they heard that the bridegroom is coming. And all they need to do is just go out. Because a bridegroom means that there's a wedding coming on. And the celebration is coming on. But besides from having the information, the same information, these ten virgins also got the same invitation. The same invitation, this says that, listen, Jesus starts the parable by saying, the kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins. And then he points out the five of them wise and five foolish. The same invitation in the sense that, listen, this invitation to this wedding that, is, that, that, that will be going on. It's not just for some people. It is open. It is open to everybody. All you need to do is to show up. You just need to show up. But well, you know what it is when you're uh, uh, when there's a wedding going on. There's a open invitation to come to the ceremony. But well, you know what it is? There's a closed invitation to come to the reception. That's just, you know. There's a open invitation. Anybody can come to the church and witness this ceremony. But for reception, you have to have an invitation card. But when Jesus came, he said, There's a wedding coming on. Open wedding. Everybody come. Also, there's a celebration going on. Open celebration. Everybody is welcome. How do I know this? When Jesus came, Jesus didn't. When we look at his birth, his birth wasn't in a palace where only selected people can go to it. His birth was in a manger where the lowliest of lowliest, the persons who, the people who were considered outcasts, they were welcome to see him, to let them understand, to listen, this kingdom of heaven, the celebration that you're hearing about, it is open to you. And it's just people who are well educated. It's not people who are nice and dressed. It's not people who know the word of God inside and outside. It's not people who, who, who who have, who, who, who have money art, it is open to every single body. That's why in John 3 verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That so many people, the rich people, the intellectual people, whosoever believe, whosoever, it's an it's a open invitation. And we have some Believes, not us, but other persons also believe that only certain people God died for. When you come to the book of Romans, Paul constantly said he came for all. And one of my professors at a Bible college number said, All mean all, and that's all, all means. All mean all, and that's all, all means. So the invitation is open. So you see, the thing is, what is your excuse? What is your excuse? Why are you passing a hand on the cup and say, Jesus, I'm not Jesus died for you. 
Jesus Jesus knew and he came. He opened his arm. He offered the invitation to everyone. That's why I believe on the cross it wasn't Jesus wasn't kneeled with his hand closed. He was nailed with his arms open. So anyone can come. Just like a thief when he was on the cross. He, he, he was a thief and he said, Why I deserve to die. But this man didn't do anything. Remember me as Jesus said, Today you shall be with me. So there's an open invitation to the celebration. And these virgins knew. These virgin knew that it's an open invitation. All you need to do is show. And when Jesus said there were five wise and five foolish, we cover the spectrum for those who think smart to those who think to them don't like a path. It is open to you. So they had the same information. They had the same invitation. But also we see the similarity with these ten virgins. They had the same expectation. They had the same expectation in the sense that in, 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 in the sense it says that in verses two down to verses two down to five to five it said, now the five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil with their vessels with their lamps. So basically, these virgins went out with their love, the expectation to listen. Now I've access this information so I can get into the celebration. They had the expectation to listen. Big, big bastards have won, and I want to be there. Me now, make him miss me. So guess what? I'm going out with my love. I'm going to put on the pretty clothes, and I get myself together, and I'm going out to meet the bridegroom to go into this wedding. God, they were they, they, go, they, go, they, go, they, go. they went to a period because they had the same expectation that I want to be in that big celebration. I want to be, as some Jamaicans would have said, in the Right? So they wanted to be there. And how do, us, how, how do I know that they also want to be there by, by just having their lunch ready? They were in the same situation as the other virgins. They were in the same situation, so I know they had the same expectation. Because Jesus didn't say that the, 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 the wise were up here so, and the foolish were down here so. In that sense, when you look at it, they were together. All ten of them mingled and meshed together in the same place, waiting on the same person to experience the same thing. They, ex they were experiencing it, they were expecting it. Because they were in the same place. Waiting. They were in the same place, watching. They were in the same place, getting themselves ready to go to the celebration that they're here about. So these ten virgins got the same information. These ten virgins got the same invitation. These ten virgins. Had the, had the same expectation because they were in the same situation. However, however, in verse 5, it says, But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, verse 6, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming! Go out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, No, lest there should not be enough oil for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. They were they had the same information, same invitation, had the same expectation, the same situation. But we see here a different preparation. We see here a different preparation. The, Jesus tells us that the first, that the wise virgins had lamp in verse four, but the wise took oil with their vessel and with their vessel with their lamp. These wise virgins had two things. They had their lamp and they had oil. 
these foolish virgins had one thing in verse, in verse 2. Sorry, in verse 3. They had one thing. They had the lamp. Let me just park the car for a minute right here. So I can talk to each and every one of us. Different preparation. The virgins. Let me talk first. It, because when I look at it, and I was studying through it, to be honest, this passage gave me sleepless nights. I can't talk to even last night. I, I, I hardly slept last night when I was going through this passage. Because you know what? Some of us here look pretty. Some of us here dress up nice. Some of us here know the church lingo. Some of us here sing palm fire. Some of us here teach. Some of us here teach. Some, some of us here offer our service. And so we are getting ready to go to that celebration. But guess what? We only come with one thing. Just a lamp. And no offering. I used, when I used to go through this passage, I used to look at it and say, but the, the, the foolish virgin had some oil. But they need carry extra oil. But when you look at the word of God, look at verse, you look at verse 3, what did Jesus say? Come on, look at, look at verse 3, what did Jesus say? Uh, hold on, is your word that said they, they didn't bring extra oil? Come on, I'll talk to you. Ah, wake up here. What, what is your version said? They didn't bring extra oil? They didn't bring no oil. Right? And, and, and theologians say the oil represents the Holy Spirit. And when I even was looking through it, I said, I, 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 I'm looking through it and I'm saying, hold on, they didn't really bring no extra oil as I thought before. It's no oil because when you go down into where it is, into verse 8 and verse 9. When they came and asked the wise virgin, give was some of your oil because our lamp is going out. My question is over. Hold on. All five of them have done one thing. Think about it. All five of them have done one the same time. If they, if they all had oil in their lamp, it simply means that they send them show up with no oil at all. Let me talk to persons here who believe that they're saved by doing things in the church. Understand, doing things in the church without having the oil of the Holy Spirit is just you're showing up with a lamp and oil. You're showing up and you're looking pretty and you're looking nice. But guess what? When Jesus returns, when, he, when Jesus returns, you are empty. Remember, this parable that Jesus is talking about or the persons he's talking to. He's not talking to the Pharisees or the scribes or the other crowd. He's talking to the people who are following him. And when you understand, Judas was in that mix also when Jesus was talking. And there's so many of us, we show up and we think that our works is good enough to get us into heaven. And so we hear pastor preach and hear other persons preach that listen, your works cannot save you. Because salvation is only a, it's a gift from God to grace, right? And we are here, some of us are here sitting down and know that, listen, we can't recall the day when we got saved. We can't recall that feeling when we got saved. And there's some denominations are saying that you can't know. You cannot know that you're really saved. So you have to work, 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 work. We need hope. Can I tell you that's a lie from the pit of hell? That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because if you turn to 1 John 5 verse 13, John is saying, you, you shall know that you are saved. You can know that you are saved. How can you know that you are saved? This is mine. This is mine. Mine, I think. Part of my way of knowing that you're saved. You might not be able to remember the exact day that you're saved, like some people. But one thing you will never forget, you will never forget what you felt when you conceived. 
I got saved July 24th, 1992. Fairview Baptist Bible Camp, Friday night between 9 and 10 o'clock. Oh, remember it? We mark it. Right? Because when I got saved in dorm, dorm number one, when I, when I got saved, I remember the last verse the counselor said to me was that, Old uh, we are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And when we finished speaking, it was tough time. And me, even up until now, I still love my belly. Right? But when I when I stepped out of dawn one, I stepped out light. I stepped out feeling full. That when my friend had come down and say, Yo, Mark, you know how I touch that? You say, No, you know, I'm green up. And they were looking at me and wanted me sick. But guess what? I was not sick. I was saved. So, I, so, so, so that feeling, that experience that, that the Holy Spirit was poured no into me. I, I, I remember it and I choose to mark that day. Understand you mean I remember the day. But you will never forget that experience when the Holy Spirit enters you. That's why David said in Psalm 51, we knew, we, we knew what to be the joy of my salvation. When the Holy Spirit come over you, when you accept him, the joy that you feel, you will never forget it. And if you, have, if you can't remember that joy, can I say, go and check yourself. Because these virgins, these five, these five virgins, thought that we had everything that we need to get into the celebration. We, we look just like them. We have a lamp just like them. But when time came, they weren't ready because they didn't, they, didn't have, they didn't have the oil just like them. And I, I'm wondering how many of us are sitting here. May I say how many of us are singing here? May I say how many of us are teaching here? And at the end of it, you're not heading up there, but down there. I look at the section when I, I, I'm through it, through it all with the wise virgin and the foolish virgin. They were in the same situation. And another question came to me. The, 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 the Bible says, the, the, the verse says in verse 3 that the all right, sorry, verse 4, that the wise had their lamp and they also have their container with oil. So the wise had two things. I'm wondering, at no point did the foolish virgin notice that they only have one? At no point did the foolish virgin, I want to say, who are calling it? How comes me who have the lamp and them have the lamp for oil? Something no much wrong with me, me need to check myself. I need, to, I need to get myself together. Some of, some of us are here and saying, how oh, come they can jump up and praise and worship like that? What's wrong with me? You need to check yourself because you may not be free as you think you are. How oh, come they can feel the spirit moving within me? Like how um, I'm like, oh, see it moving in Sister McLeod. That's what I see and I see the, the expression on other person's face. Maybe you need to check yourself because you may not be free as you think you are. And I'm saying to myself, hold on, are these foolish virgins so prideful that they see that the, the, the wise virgin have extra, something extra, and I don't have it? And think that, why, you know what? What we have good enough? We don't need nothing else. May I say to you, when it comes to the kingdom of God, you are not good enough. We are not good enough. Our love is not good enough. As Isaiah said, our righteousness is as filthy rags. As Paul said, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Listen to me, people. You, you're not good enough to get into heaven. I was not good enough to get into heaven. But guess what? I needed something that is not inside of me. I needed something that was outside of me. And that is, what, that is why Jesus came and died. To give you something that is outside of you. To let you understand and listen. The celebration. You can't go in by yourself. You're going to need my special invitation. You're going to need me. And guess what? I am offering myself to you. People, stop fooling yourself. Stop fooling yourself that just because I come at church, me good. 
Stop fooling yourself that just because the sick and the choir be good. Stop fooling yourself that just because I pine, I'm good. Stop fooling yourself that just because I work on the hospitality committee, I teach Sunday school, I am good. It's not about you. When you start reach a point and say, I am good, I am good, you need to check your salvation because guess what? It's not about you. It's about him and what he has done for you. So when I'm looking through that, I'm saying to myself, hold on, I'm so foolish, these, these virgins are foolish. Not only to don't carry any extra, not only to don't carry any oil. See, now was an extra oil. Not only to don't carry any oil, but even when that's, even when, I believe when they saw the wise, wise virgin with them, with their oil, them say, what we have? Good. People, stop fooling yourself. If you were good enough, Jesus would not have died for us. But not only for the not only for the foolish virgins, I had a problem with. The boy, they were they were really for fool. And some of you, please don't fool yourself. Get yourself from it. But I also had a problem with the wise virgins. What was my problem with the wise virgins? We see in verse 5 that they were, they all, well, the foolish version slept at some slumber at sleep, right? That's what your Bible says, verse 5, the foolish version, right? No man, it ain't. The wise version them now go sleep, I like it. And the foolish version them alone sleep. Every translation says, all slept and sleep. The foolish and the wise. I see. For those who know that you're sick, can I can I challenge you? Stop fooling people and send them to hell. What am I what, what am I saying? Everybody is responsible for their own salvation. But you see, how oh, some of us Christians live, we're pushing our people straight to hell. Because guess what? The wise virgin who know who knew that they should be watching. The wise virgin who knew that they should be getting themselves prepared, got themselves comfortable, and fooled the foolish virgin. So listen, everything good. You are right. Or in the sense that, listen, what you're doing is perfectly fine. Because guess what? I am doing it too. If you know you are saved, please, stop living a life that pushes people away from God. Because at the end of it, at, at, at the end of it, when Jesus comes, when Jesus, when Jesus comes, I believe that some of the persons that we have around us when look and say, oh, come to me and tell me about Jesus Christ. Because not only did the fool, I believe why the foolish virgin didn't ask about the ask about the from the wise virgin. But I'm saying to myself, why didn't the wise virgin say anything to the foolish virgin about the oil? Because they were there for an extended period of time. Because when it says the Bible said that he didn't leave, it means that he wasn't just regular leave. He went late, late. He went extra late. So they had a, a good period of time to, to look around and say, hold on, we have two. We have the lamp and we have the oil. And we see those ladies over there. Only a lamp. Why we don't go back to them and say, hold on there. Sir, you need something else to know. Do you, do you have the oil of the Holy Spirit? Mom, you need something else. Why did they go over at that time and tell them? And, and they had to wait until the last minute when the virgins came to them and asked them about oil. They're sending them to listen, go get it yourself. Why, why are some of us who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, who know we have that oil of the Holy Spirit, but we see persons and we don't want to tell them about it. It pains my heart, brothers and sisters. It pains my heart. And I know it pains Brother Clark or it pains some other person's heart. But when it's time for evangelism, I want to look when certain people show up. Can I put it that just like those white, vir white virgins, may I say they were mean and loving? That some of us here are mean and unloving. Because we have something, not something, we have someone who is able to bring us 
to a celebration of joy and peace and bliss. And we see other persons who don't have that, who, who don't have that someone, and we're willing and we're comfortable to rest and sleep around them and say, let them go there. If you're comfortable with that, I pray the Holy Spirit will break you very hard. I said, stop being comfortable. Because the wise virgin slept and slumbered with the foolish virgins. They, let, they, they gave them a false sense of comfort that everything is all right. What you have is all right. When in actuality, it was a lie. What you have is not good enough. You need more. Because you see, their falls, their, fall, their different preparation caused them to end up in a in different destination. Their different preparation caused them to end up in a different destination. Because we see that the, 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 the song that comes out that says, the bridegroom coming, go out and meet him. And they got up and the, they, they trimmed them up. And they said, they got themselves together. They brushed out their clothes, they put the dust was on it. And they made sure that they look nice and pretty. And they might get them locked together. And they said, hold on, there's something for us. And they asked the wise word, they said, yo, make up some of your oil now. And the wise word said, I can't give you any of mine unless we, I don't have enough. Let me just point something out, please. Salvation, only you can get it yourself. When the wise virgin told them to go out, go, go to those who sell it and buy. He, they were not saying that you can't buy salvation. They were saying you need to go to the legitimate source. And that source is Jesus. And they were also saying that you need to go yourself. Don't think that just because your father, your mother, your grandmother is here, so, you, so the salvation will go through over upon you. Understand, yes, the blessings may flow over upon you, but the salvation is now flow over upon you. So you, if you're here, I think, say, why I can't trace back to what all my generation say, my grandmother is here, my grandfather is here, my father is here, my mother is here, my brother is here, my, my, my great, great, whatever is here, even the dog is here, which is not possible. But you feel that. Don't think that their salvation is transferable over to you. You have to get it yourself. Because guess what? If you don't, you're going to end up in a place where, listen, you didn't plan to be. Because that's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, did I do this? Did we do this in your name? And Jesus said to them, depart from me. I knew you were not. And it's the same thing he said here in chapter, in chapter 25, verse 13. When the, wife, when the foolish virgin went out and they said they get it and they come and knocking on the door and they said, ah, and they said, Sir, Lord, Lord, just like in Matthew chapter 7, Lord, Lord, open unto me. And it, it jumped out to me that at this big celebration of a bridegroom, the bridegroom will come answer the door. In those days when the celebration is going on, the bride goes sit down comfortable but up and now has said nothing. He's just focused on his bride, he's taking care. But here Jesus is saying the bridegroom answered the door. In essence, he's trying to let us know that listen, he is the bridegroom, but he is the doorkeeper also. That listen, you can't come to him and say, Jesus may never know, he goes say a tell me no say no. He is the one who will be standing there and say, listen, you thought you were ready. You thought what you, what you have and who you are is okay. But you never, but guess what? I never knew you. And I like to tell people, when they get saved, it's not, you, it's not that you know Jesus Christ. It's that he knows you. And these five virgins, it, these five foolish virgins ended up in a destination that they never expected. And I'm wondering, how many of us are looking forward to heaven? How many of us are looking to the day when there will be, as, as John says in Revelation chapter 21, there will be no more heartache, there will be no more pain, there will be no more suffering, there will be no more death. 
right? Now, um, there will be no need to put up war because God is taking care of everything. There will be no need for the sun or the moon because the brilliance of God will be there. There will be no need for hunger. There will be no need for any of that. There's coming a time when it will be celebration. It will be a time of joy and peace and not just for a time but for eternity. And there's so many of us looking forward to that day. I am looking forward to that day. How many of you are looking forward to that day? So many of us are looking forward to that day. But so many of us will be crying on that day. Because we think we look good. We sound good. But when he shows up, we weren't prepared at all. We hear, as Pastor said last week, we hear a lot. So we hear say Jesus who come, Jesus who come from, from here there we need. And some people that say from the devil was a boy. We hear say Jesus who come up until no we can't come. May I just say he's giving you time. He not give me time, you know, come and say, you get myself ready, be ready. Be good. Right? And so I don't know. So let's see. I know where I'll be going, I know. I know where I'm going, yes, I know. But the question is, are you sure where you are going? Are you sure? And why he's delayed is for each and every one of us to get ourselves together. Each and every one of us to get ourselves right. Each and every one of us to look at our lives and say, listen, if I can't recall that, that initial feeling of the Holy Spirit, where I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, where that joy came over me like there was nothing in this world that can bother me. Then you need to check yourselves. Get yourself right. Because when he comes, if you're left behind, there will be no second chance. In the book of Thessalonians, let us understand that listen, when Jesus returns, for those who hear the word of God, there will be no second chance. Because you have some people that say, we trust God if he come back. Because if he come back and say the Christian and God, then we go say, why he went through, and then we go accept him. Listen, the Bible clearly tells us that listen, he will give a strong illusion. So guess what? Your opportunity that you have right now is no. Because he can return at any time. But if he doesn't return by that, if he doesn't return right now, but guess what? You may die any time too. And when you die, there's no repentance after the grave. Just like in Lou, when the white uh, when the rich man died, there was nothing he could do to be saved again. So my thing is, we have the same information that listen, there is coming a wonderful day of celebration. We have the same info, we have we have the same we got the same invitation that listen, it is open to everyone. And I believe we all have the same expectation that we want to be there. And we all right now are in the same situation because we're sitting here in his mercy and his grace. But guess what? If your preparation is not right, you will end up in a different destination. So while you're watching, while you're waiting, can I encourage you, don't wait in vain. Because as I said, too late, it shall be your cry. Don't be like those five vir foolish virgins. Get yourself ready. Get yourself right. If you don't remember, or can't recall that experience, or can't recall that, 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 that wonderful since that, that, that wonderful feeling and, uh, and time of deliverance. If you can't recall that, may I encourage you to come back and make sure. Because guess what? You can't too safe. It's being, too, it is being safe. So we're sitting here. We have the time. While we wait. While we watch. Get yourself properly prepared to meet you. Let us do. Heavenly Father, we thank you.
We thank you for your word that has gone forth. And Lord, as we have seen where we can be fooled to think that we're ready to meet you. Help us, oh Father, to open, to open our eyes and make ourselves right and ready to meet you when you shall return. Whether in the air or whether we meet you through the, de through the door of death. That Lord, we will that we be able to look at you as our Savior and not as our judge. We'll be able to look at you to hear you say, I know you, and not to hear you say, I never knew you. So Lord, for these next few moments, oh Father, I pray, oh God, that those who need to do business with you, whether who, those who fall under the category of foolish virgins, oh Father, that they will come and get the oil that is necessary to get into that celebration. Receive the Holy Spirit that you're offering to them right now, oh God. And they'll not fool themselves thinking that what I have is good enough. So Lord, help us. And I pray that each and every one of us will respond accordingly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.